Welcome back at PPGYT. This week we're focusing on mental health. Today I'm going to tell, talk to you about sleep as it's a major player in our mental well-being. My name is Ruben, here we go. Of course we need to sleep to recover our body from our physical endeavors, so from our training, but also we recover our mental state during our sleep. We process our emotions, but also store all the things we learned during the day from our short-term memory into our long-term memory. That's why this information gets lost if we don't sleep properly. So you can learn whatever you like. If you don't sleep well, you will lose a lot of information. As a third, we clear out most of our toxins during the night. So when we are awake, we eat, we consume things, but we also get bacteria in through our mouth, which get into our intestines and then some get into our body. And during the night, we have the time with our liver to get all the toxins out. If we, again, don't sleep enough, we don't have enough time to fight those bacteria, and we might get more uh, illnesses or get uh, swollen joints or swollen eyelids, more snot, because we didn't have enough time to clear the toxins during our sleep and they find uh, watery places which are in the joints, ears, nose, eyes, areas. Bad sleep affects us in loads of ways, um, mainly in your mental health, because your decision making goes down dramatically. Uh, if you sleep just five hours, it uh, puts your brain in the same state as being drunk, which can be fun, but for making the right decisions, it's not the best state to be in. Our focus goes down dramatically, so um, your performance on work, but also your physical performance drops immensely. Um, your hormone levels are being shifted, which is really bad if you struggle to not overeat. You've got two hormones, ghreline and leptin, uh, which are out of balance, which makes you less uh, feeling less full, so your satiety goes down uh, and your hunger feelings go up. So both bad if you want to have a good diet. Um, and your um, ability to recover goes down dramatically as well because your stress levels go up. If you sleep, uh, if you have a bad night of sleep or several bad nights of sleep, your body stays in a sympathetic tone, so your heart rate will stay up higher than needed, your breathing frequency will stay up higher than needed, so you get an agitated mind because you get in this fight and flight mode, which you cannot escape out of because your body is too tired actually to calm everything down into a more rest and digest phase. One of the uh, biggest experience or experiments we do every year is changing the clock with daylight saving time. So in spring, we lose an hour of sleep and that the day after we have 20% more accidents happening, more strokes happening than on a regular day. While in autumn, when we have another hour to sleep, you see the opposite. 20% less strokes, 20% less car accidents, which shows us really clearly that only one hour of extra sleep or one hour less uh, makes huge differences in your capabilities, but also in your mental well being. So I would like you to invite to prioritize your sleep as one of the most important things you can do on a daily basis. 
Uh, enough sleep depends from person to person, but we can say that 99% of the people at, need, at least need seven hours of sleep. So if you are a person that thinks they can get away with five hours, you're probably not. Still, there are some people we can sleep less, but if we take a look into how sleep works, we have sleep cycles and a cycle of sleep takes around 90 minutes and it consists of four phases which uh, have different goals uh, to recover your body or your mind. So you have a part where you recover the body, then you have a part where you can release your emotions, a part where you have your short-term mem short memory process to your long-term memory. And then after all those phases, you kind of wake up again and fall asleep into the next sleeping cycle, which is again approximately 90 minutes. Um, and it's good to not wake up in your deepest phases of sleep, which is in between the 45 minutes to an hour and 15 or an hour mark. So if you can uh, sleep a multiple of one and a half hours, so seven and a half is a good amount that helps to uh, wake up energized because if you have the alarm buzzing in the middle of your deep sleep you will wake up and be like Whoa, where am i we all have been there so try to use those sleep cycles and wake up approximately after seven and a half hours to eight hours to get enough sleep in a good challenge for you is to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day. So I'm gonna challenge you guys to see if you can go to bed and wake up at the same time for the next two or three weeks, which helps you to sync your biological clock with the sundown and sunrise. Um, if you do this correctly, you won't need an alarm after a certain uh, especially like after a certain amount of time because your biological clock will start taking over and you will get tired once it gets dark your melatonin production will go up which helps you to get drowsy and sleepy and then in the morning your cortisol levels will go up before your alarm clock will ring and you will wake up automatically by yourself So you're probably at this video because you're not a good sleeper. So after all this chit chatting, I will get you to some tips to improve your sleep. The first one is do not drink any caffeine after two o'clock. Caffeine binds to uh, our receptors of adenosine, which is the receptor for being fatigued. So what you actually do when you drink a coffee, you feel energized because we block the feeling of being tired. If you don't sleep well, skip that caffeine so you feel tired and fall asleep more easily. Then as a second, I already talked about it a little bit, try to go to bed at the same time every day so your body is primed to fall asleep. As a third, I want you to dim down all the lightning once the sun goes under. So we want to stay in sync with the sun rise and sun down because our body is adapted to it. If, we, if the sun goes down, we start to produce melatonin, which makes us sleepy. And if we keep all the lights on, watch TV, watch all the other screens, our cell phones, we keep getting in light, which makes our brain think it's daylight, so we're about to kick in the day instead of fall asleep. So a big no is keeping the lights on. Try to dim the lights down. If you don't have a dimmer, try to put candles on. Um, and then another tip I would like you to give is an hour prior to bed, start doing some relaxing activities. So you can walk the dog if you have a dog or you can read a chilled book. So I won't read a thriller book because it will get you excited and we want to slow down. I'll definitely 
uh, recommend you to do some breathing techniques. We've done a video on that in another, uh, another video of PPGYT. Uh, you can drink a cup of tea or take a hot shower. And a hot shower is really good because after the hot shower, your body will lose a lot of its heat. And if you lose your heat, your body temperature drops down, which is a natural sign that you want to fall asleep. That's why you get chilly when you're getting tired at night. And then another tip is making your bedroom as dark as possible. So get out everything that puts out light from the same reason we want to have our melatonin spiking. And that only happens when we don't get daylight in um, and we get uh, we get waken, woken up by daylight, so when the sun rises, our cortisol starts to rise, which wakes us up. But if your uh, bedroom is next to a, a post with light, in your bedroom is light all night long, uh, that fucks up your sleep as well. So if you uh, lacked some sleep during a night, you can use a disco or a power nap to get a short bout of sleep in to feel re-energized afterwards. Um, with a lot of people, I aim to do five sleep cycles a day. So if you, for example, only had six hours of sleep that night, you could take a disco nap which also counts as one sleep cycle, although it's only 30 minutes of sleep. I don't want you to go longer than 40 minutes on your power naps because then you get in that deeper phase of sleep and if you wake up after those 40 minutes, you will wake up more, feeling more tired than before. And if you want to take the ultimate disco sleep, you should take your coffee before hitting your power nap because coffee takes 20 minutes to get into your system so if you drink your coffee do some breathing exercises sleep for 20 to 30 minutes wake up the coffee will kick in and you'll feel re-energized and ready to roll again so this was our video about sleep if you have any questions put them in the comments below and we'll get back to you for now have a nice night of sleep and see you around.